Second. Aye. 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 So moved. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do I have a motion to uh, approve the agenda? So moved. All in favor? I would like second. to. Discussion? Uh, I would second. Yes, I'd like to add um, two items to it, please. One is a very short update on Millbrook, uh, on um, the municipal center, and the other is a discussion of placing a conservation easement on the town's property that's part of the Millbrook Preserve. So, two items. And then I'd like to add a discussion of the sales tax discussion that's been going on. And I guess I would like to add a discussion about the uh, fireworks. Uh, so that we have four additions. Uh, so. Uh, and did we have a second on the motion? So. It's only like to second the motion? Seconded. Great. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Do we have any public comment this evening? <laughs> My name is Chris Harpert on Plains Road, and I believe that uh, you're not going to be doing the vote today in the water district. Um, no, but I just want to, you know, during public comment, you're going to reschedule something for next month and let us know tonight uh, when it is, I suspect. Um, but I just wanted to, you know, again say, and first off, I want to welcome the new board. Um, the, uh, I just, you know, with the water district on Plains Road, it is uh, one of the things that it says in the town code is that all parties must be benefited. And I'll say it the second time that I am certainly not going to be benefited by the uh, implementation of a water district uh, as per the amount of water that I use for my honey farm or bee farm uh, and uh, in regards to uh, the amount of gallons that I use every year and every month uh, that I don't feel that I'll be you know, benefited by having to buy water when I've been there for 27 years and my well has never run dry. Uh, I just wanted to mention that, that you know, not benefited. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Sue Weber. I live on Plains Road, and I also want to welcome the new members of the board. Um, as you know, there's been a long history to the Plains Road water issue, first with the village board and now with the town board. I feel that it is imperative that the new members of the board thoroughly understand and appreciate the concerns of the many residents of Plains Road about the use of the aquifer on 101 Plains for the three, two, three, so far, 10-week shutdowns of the Catskill Aqueduct and also, as has been stated at a recent board meeting, for emergency backup. The report by the respected hydrogeologist Paul Rubin examining the data generated by the town engineer Dave Clouser is crucial reading for town board members. It brings into question the viability and sustainability of the use of the aquifer over the long term. If anybody needs a copy, we have one available for you. Given the recent reports about the water in Flint, Michigan, as well as in Hoosick Falls, New York, it's an incumbent upon you as our public officials to respond to our legitimate concerns and to be ever vigilant about water quality issues raised by residents of Plains Road and in the wider community. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Kevin Borden. Uh, my family and I live at Calvin Boulevard. Um, thank you for your service, of course, for our community. Um, I'd just like to share some observations with the town board regarding um, the Trans-Hudson CVS proposal that I've spoken before. 
um, in front of the town board on and the planning board. So I've been very blessed to work in a number of places that range from Arcata, California to Williston, North Dakota that are facing similar issues when it comes to planning and development, especially when large and exceedingly wealthy corporations seek to expand their market share. New Paltz is a unique place, but we're not facing unique circumstances with this application. So many have voiced um, concerns pertaining to the detrimental effects that this proposal will have on our traffic patterns, the environment, community character, safety, and fiscal health. The planning board has yet to sufficiently discuss and or acknowledge these issues in a clear, transparent, and organized way. Even worse, the planning board has blocked the ability of the public to submit testimony for the record by prematurely closing the public hearing. Whenever asked to modify their proposal, Trans Hudson and CBS have essentially said no to the planning board. This current slipshod, take them one at a time approach to planning is illustrated by this application will result in unrecoverable impacts to our roadways, environment, community character, fiscal health, and safety. So it's now time for the town board to act. The town board needs to put in place a temporary moratorium for the entranceway to our community surrounding the New York Thruway Route 299 Putt Corners area. This will allow us to put together a thoughtful overlay planning district that is based on a clear strategy that puts our needs first. We cannot afford to wait for the comprehensive plan to be put together while current applications that deal with this area continue to move forward, driven exclusively by developers' desires. The town board also needs to carefully consider the current consultants to the planning board, given the areas of concerns that many have shared extend beyond traditional civil engineering and legal matters. We have a rare opportunity to initiate an effort here that, growth, that ensures that growth and development at the entranceway are thoughtful and sustainable. I have faith in the skill set of our current town board, for all of you, to rise to this occasion. <clears throat> I think it's also important not to take requests like this and respond with the usual, gosh, this is complicated and difficult. We need to weigh all these different players, the DOT, state grants, lawyers, blah, blah, blah. Like, we have an opportunity here to do something that could shape the future of how our town operates for the better. Let's not take that for granted. It's too easy to get lulled into the relative comforts that many of us, especially my own family, enjoy that so many in our world don't have access to. Just think about the Native American kid who watches their community in Pine Ridge continue to be ripped apart by general, generational poverty, <clears throat> largely by design. They never get opportunities like this. We don't face those kinds of insurmountable, insurmountable obstacles in New Paltz. We are blessed with the opportunity to take this on, a temporary moratorium and a needed overlay district is straightforward and painless to do. Now is the time to move on this before our community's assets, assets are sacrificed for no other reason than our unwillingness to act when we had the chance. Thank you for your time and your service. Uh, any more public comments? If not, we'll move on to the um, Warrants and prepays. That's something I didn't say before about Kevin's comment. Is that something we might put on an agenda? Uh, sure. We can have a discussion about the next agenda. Uh, yeah. Why don't we Why don't we do a little more research into that and then schedule it at our next meeting if we want to have a discussion on it? Does that sound appropriate? Okay. Let's talk. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, okay, so we, uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I'd like to make a mo like to make a motion to uh, add an additional forty dollars to uh, budget line AAA five two two one three four zero dash four zero zero. This is for the attendance of uh, two town employees at the Association of Towns annual meeting in 2016. The uh, price of the hotel rooms went up uh, $20 each. So, so second. 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 Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passed. I uh, would like to request an authorized prepay to peak power systems for 19000 
$19,750 for the installation of the new generator for sewer district six. This is a 2005, 2015 expense that was board approved at the meeting uh, September 9th, 2015. So moved. All in favor? Second. second. All in favor? All, all second. All and favor. just for, uh, Vandal wants to discuss, so the good news is, is uh, Chris size this and we make sure that uh, it'll be used should Super 6 become a pumping station for so building needs, so it won't just be a one-time purchase. Uh, this will be used in the future. And then to clarify, that's just for the purchase of the generator, it's still being installed? Yes. So there'll be another charge that will yes. yes. Do we know the magnitude of that? Chris does part of it. I would think over the now. Thanks. Aye. 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 All right, so moved. Uh, also, we need a uh, request approval for the authorization of prepayment to Edmonds and Associates Hardware and Software Support Agreement and the annual payment of $15,365. This is the software for uh, billing for utilities, finance, electronic requisition, human resources, permits, codes, basically all of the software for the town. So, uh, do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. So we got, uh, now on to new business. Uh, I would like to make a motion to uh, continue uh, for a continuation, a resolution for the continuation of public hearing for the Plains Road Water District. So, Ed, you want to go through that deal? Uh, so this is a uh, second, I'm sorry, second. Discussion? So yeah, this is a resolution for the Plains Road Water District number five, and it's a resolution for the continued hearing. Uh, you have a copy of that, Roseanne? So what it is, is the resolution is at a regular meeting of the Town Board of Town of New Paltz, Ulster County, New York, held at Town Hall, New Paltz, New York, in said town on the 28th day of uh, February, January, I said January 2016 at 7.45 p.m. For family time, the meeting was called to order by Council Member Cortez. I'm sorry, Supervisor Batez. And uh, Roseanne, you can walk us through the roll call. Supervisor Batez. Present. 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 The following uh, resolution was offered by Council Member Irwin, who moved its adoption, seconded by Council Member to wit. Whereas by order adopted by the town board on November 19, 2015, a public hearing upon the petition for the establishment of town water district number five was opened and held at the community center located at Three Beckman Drive, New Paltz on December 8, 2015. At the conclusion whereof the public hearing was adjourned without date pending the receipt of additional information by the town board regarding the formation of the proposed district and Whereas the town board has determined that it is the best interest of the public that such public hearing be continued to consider further the petition and the issues surrounding the formation of the water district. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the aforesaid public hearing be continued at the community center, three veterans drive, in the New Pulse, New York, on the 18th day of February, 2016, at seven o'clock p.m to consider further the petition and the issues surrounding the formation of Water District Number 5 in the Town of New Paltz. And it is further resolved that the Town Clerk shall give notice of said hearing by publication in the New Paltz Times, the official newspaper of the town at least 10 days and not more than 20 days before the date set there within for the continued hearing as A4 said, and shall also post a copy of said order on the sign board of the town maintained pursuant to section 30 of the town law at least 10 days and not more than 20 days before the date designated for the continued hearing as aforesaid 
The question of the adoption of the foregoing resolution is duly put to a vote on roll call for the results as following. And Roseanne, if you could call the roll call. Aye. Aye. Council Member Lewis. Aye. Council Member Lewis. Aye. Council Member Lewis. Aye. Council Member Seifert Lewis. Aye. Okay, so then uh, the next piece now is just uh, the Town of Notice Town Board Notice Continued Public Hearing. Mm -hmm. And I don't need to hear it, but what it will be is this one. Should you have a uh, version of this in Word? Yes. So uh, just so everyone knows, it is in your packet there. There should be a Town of New Paltz Town Board Notice of Public. Uh, hearing continued public hearing for water is number five. Uh, it's exactly what we just went through, uh, and Roseanne will be publishing that. She'll be sending to the paper, so it will be published uh, in next week's paper, which will put us within the 10 days and less than 20 days. So that it is both the continuation and the resolution continuation of public hearing. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. So the, the, uh, the next, uh, uh, we have an authorizing resolution uh, for the Wallkill Valley Rail Trail Grant. Uh, this was applied for last, uh, I think, summer, or, uh, summer, spring. And uh, we're just kind of finishing it out. I think this was done by the former uh, supervisor and her assistant and maybe some of the board members. But this is for a grant for uh, $23,000 to the town for new uh, signage along the rail, uh, Walco Valley Rail Trail. And so we need uh, an authorization. This is on page two, or in, in number two in your packet at the top. We, uh, we just need a resolution, I'm happy to read it. Um, we need to authorize that we're gonna accept their money. Uh, and we have an 80-20 uh, an match, so we need to provide uh, up to $5,000 in uh, in-kind match, labor, materials, or uh, money if we want, which we don't want, uh, for this. And I think Chris is gonna be doing the work. So we have plenty of labor for this. So we, um, I would like to uh, have a motion for uh, accepting the resolution that the town of New Falls is hereby authorized and directed to accept funds from the state of New York Office of Parks, Recreation, Historic Preservation in accordance with the provisions of Title IX of the Environmental Protection Act 1993 or the recreational trails program in amount not to exceed $23,000 and enter into and execute a project agreement with the state for financial assistance to uh, the town of New Paltz and if appropriate a, a conservation easement preservation covenant to the deed of the assisted property. So moved. Seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Passed. And just so everyone knows, one thing that's great with this is one is uh, the new uh, <coughs> director of the Walker Valley Rail Trail. If you go to, I believe it's one of these pages in here, uh, there was some confusion over where the signage would be going, and they directly made it, uh, I think, oh, page five. Uh, because the Walker Valley Rail Trail is so long, it goes all the way basically from the Walker, uh, mm -hmm. much longer ago, Walker Valley Prison, uh, the Walker Prison, all the way down, well, now to Kingston, but. The, all the signage that this is providing will be in the town and village of New Falls, which is very, very nice. And so this is the large, right now, this is currently the largest park in our community. So it's good to see. Could I just ask, just for people's edification, is it in fact uh, signage to help motorists know there's this coming up? To yeah, it's, uh, if you go through it, the great question is full signage that indicates road crossings. So all the road crossing signage will be returned uh, and it's actually gonna be more I think Chris, did someone send you an email? I think Chris might even have evolved and signed just more regulations with advising both motorists and walkers to be aware. And then also there's going to be signage. Uh, New Paltz is unique, not all the communities do it. Uh, and also, you go on one of these pages, we don't allow motorized vehicles on it, we don't allow ATVs, we don't allow snowmobiles. So that signage will also be indicated of what we allow on ours. We do allow horses, we allow hiking, we allow biking, but that is the extent of it. So yeah, it's, it's a, a good project. <coughs> okay. So I, I'd like to uh, uh, have a resolution to uh, put forward the letter of agreement to designate the LEPC chair. This is at number three on uh, in our board packet. Uh, and this is, uh, whereas 
Robert Lucchese is employed by the town in the position of police lieutenant, and whereas in addition to his assigned duties as a police lieutenant, the town wishes to assign Lucchese the duties of emergency planning chair for the town, and whereas the parties here too wish to enter into a memorandum of agreement compensating Lucchese for additional duties performed in the position of emergency planning chair. He's, he is, he's told me that he is not interested in receiving the, the stipend, but this is to engage him uh, right. as the chair, and he can turn the stipend down if he so chooses. That's what I was going to ask you, actually, because he said the same to me after you had talked to him. Uh, so do we want to delete one, or was it advised that we leave one in there, and then he is welcome to decline the stipend? I'm, I'm either way. I'm good either way, too. I, I didn't know how you were advised. Or I, I would say we'll let him turn it down. And should he worse, wish to give it to a local charity or something? Yeah, yeah. maybe for or? funds for the department or the, the, the okay. program, or the DCA, whatever you would like. Okay. Well, big well, thanks to your lieutenant as well for that. That shows a real, I mean, not that this <coughs> was what shows it because he shows it every day, but it really shows a real sense of community as well to take on that additional role and then um, deny that stipend to you. So thanks, Rob. Uh, second. Second. Mm -hmm. Discussion? So moved. Or all, all, all in favor? Aye. 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 You could reasonably anticipate that. Yeah, that was good. Uh, we, um, I also, I was informed that we had, have not designated the Community Improvement Team Liaison, and I'm going to volunteer for that, but I need board approval, I think. You don't technically, but if you want, we could do that. Uh, well, we can have a discussion, but anyone else like that position? I know you guys are all pretty busy. It's during the work day. So I'm, I'm happy to do it, and um, if I don't need approval, you're good. I'm good. You now. And, and I'm happy that you want to do it. <laughs> I have two. Moving along. Uh, moving along. Discussion of an applicant for the ENCB appointment. Uh, we have uh, someone has applied. Yeah, I'm trying to find an application. Number five. Do we want to um, offer this person the chance to come in for an interview instead of uh, approving it? Well, I, I thought we would discuss it and then we can, if we want, at the next meeting we can ask. We have two applicants. Um, both for the ENCB? Uh, one, one, one for the ENCB and one for the Historic Preservation Commission. Sure. And I thought we would discuss it. If we want, we can have them come in at the next meeting, but I wanted to make sure people were. Has anyone met with him or no? Uh, um, yeah, he, he attended the previous ENCB meeting. Uh, he sent me an email saying he was interested. I gave him the time. He came. Uh, he contributed. There were I, I don't see an issue with it, but I, I think that um, I have no doubt he'll go to the next meeting, whether he's a member or not. So I would just say, why don't we just, at the very least, make an offer to do an interview? Or if you, uh, if everyone is just based on a CV, if anyone's comfortable, and then you're the liaison, yeah, to e you're, you're the liaison to it. I, I don't mind acting on it. Is there only one position, or are there I think we have uh, two, two or three. Okay. We actually have two positions open yeah. on the CV right now. So. I'm comfortable if everyone else is, and anyone wants to interview them, I'm more than happy to also do that. I don't know. What about the second person? Uh, <coughs> that's for the store preservation. Oh. They want to go on. They want to go on another board. So we only have one application for this. So <coughs> I will make the motion to appoint Andrew Ashton to the ENCB for the remainder of <coughs> one of the vacant terms, I guess, to be determined by the clerk. Okay. Great. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Andrew. And um, so also that's contingent, of course, on him filing the proper paperwork as well. Uh, we have a, the same. Uh, Wait, that might not have been Andrew Ashton. Yes. And yeah, yeah, no, that's good. So we also have the Ian's HPC. Yeah, Susan, we have another uh, applicant, and I, I got this from the chair of the uh, Historic Preservation Commission, uh, Susan uh, DeMarc. Yeah. She, she would like to be appointed to the Historic Preservation Commission. She's met with the committee. The uh, chair is in favor of it. Uh, again, we can bring this person in and interview them, or we can look at the CV and decide and appoint. I, I, I would say that since we just appointed someone who had attended the meeting and had the support of the committee, it sounds like this person fits that 
as well. So I, I would feel comfortable uh, if someone wanted to make a motion to do that. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I, I make a motion to appoint uh, Susan Lamarck to the Historic Preservation Committee for the remainder of the term of one of the open seats contingent on her filing the correct paper. Second. Second. All in yeah. discussion. Uh, discussion? Uh, did, did we put an advertisement out soliciting volunteers? These are on the website yeah. already. We haven't done it an addition. If you go to the website, it lists all the vacancies. We actually well, did have them in the paper, what, and was it? it was in the paper, and it was really fun. and I know it's on the website right now. For a long yeah. time, yeah. as long as it was in the paper, I had no problem. I remember an earlier meeting we had some questions as to what yep. the procedure should be. Thank you. Great. I also call, think that call. position's been vacant for quite some time as so. well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, I realize. Yeah. That. Uh, call the question. Thank you, uh, Aye. 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 So passed. Well, we're moving along here, guys. Uh, so this, uh, the next item is uh, for a reinstatement of New Falls Child Care Center budget line. Uh, if you recall, uh, sometime in the fall, the uh, previous board uh, elected to extend the lease of the New Falls Child Care Center for, I think, 18 months or something mm -hmm. like that, through into June of 2017. But we didn't recreate the budget line for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so we just need to make a line in the budget for them. Uh, so if something does come up, we can pay. So my, my understanding when uh, we did this last time was that there could have been the perception that we were not handling issues with the child care center, but I believe that Chris explained to us that that work was being done anyway they did not, correct me if I'm incorrect here, but that work was being done anyway that, that they didn't have the line because you were using it out of your line based on it being a town maintenance issue. Um, so I don't have a problem with us creating a line, but do we necessarily need to fund it if they already are going to have those services? We, if, I if, you, if you create a budget, if you add a budget line back into the budget, you need to fund it. Because we have a budget line number. I didn't bring my budget with me. We just, it's at zero dollars right now. Because we ended up finding out, you know, that what okay. we were doing is Chris was putting into uh, B and G. Usually it ended up in the B and G, uh, I'm sorry, buildings and grounds line. And so we just never touched the funds in there. I think we actually ended up transferring them out a couple of years, just it was a thousand dollars we were funding it with. So, so we could move. Do we not need to do it? It was it was two thousand dollars. Two thousand, thank you. Yeah, and, and, and I wouldn't want to pull that money from Chris's line either, yeah. or pull it from another source. Well, so I think. What about the emergency preparedness fifteen hundred dollars that you're not going to start? Well, I, wanna, I would rather us see if maybe Rob had something for that money. Or if he just wants to refuse it. To put it. into consideration, not saying we would do whatever Rob asked for us for. Well, my, my point is, and, and if people disagree with me, that's fine, but assuming that it's not that maintenance issues will be uh, neglected without this line, then I would suggest that we keep it as it is. And what we just said right now as a board is that we have a commitment when we do our budget next year to establish a line, and that we've just said now that we have a commitment to doing any of the maintenance issues that we normally would anyway. So if there was a perception, and I think there was when we had those conversations, that it was being neglected because the, fine, the line was um, eliminated, that we've just put that to rest. Chris wants to think. And Chris should definitely say okay. something. The, the neglection was, it was because they weren't the board wasn't sure they were going to re up the contract. Mm -hmm. So it was one of the money for the building yep. might not be redone. Mm -hmm. um, since our conversation with Neil about this, because it's going to the 2017, that we just band aid as much as possible. And right now we're already looking at a sewer pump that has to be replaced, mm -hmm. um, inspection of the heating system. Um, they have to be certified. There's an expense. Um, this some things building the grounds historically has done um, that we shouldn't be touching or shouldn't be certifying because we don't have the expertise or the background for that. Um, so you know there's an expense. Yep. Um, this is also stuff that I did not put into the 2016 BG budget with um, service contracts for years. Um, but there's always been an emergency. I was always held back on. Well, 
don't fix this, or maybe, you know, it was, it was getting very difficult to figure out what to do, what not to do. If it was a safety issue, I just did it. Sure. Um, if it thought we could get away with it, then we tried not to, but it's, you know, it's not out the building yet. I mean, I guess I, I was just thinking, you know, we, the board extended it, but now we, we can't just ask Chris to bear that whole burden out of his budget. I mean, he didn't okay. account for it. So. I mean, I don't believe it's going to break the bank, mm -hmm. you know, but again, I didn't budget for it. And things do come up with all of our aging buildings that are definitely problematic that, you know, things are a little tight for getting here. <laughs> well, we can always take a look later on at the to and from, from uh, buildings and grounds. See where Chris is on that. No well, if, you, if you wanted to do it, when you get close toward the end of the budget cycle, if I'm having an issue with either you know, service contracts or big things come up, which has happened, um, then that's when I guess we, um, you know, I'll try and stretch the easy budget as far as you can. Mm -hmm. and if there's an emergency, then we'll have to look for, you know, something big, we'll look for money then. I mean, we might, if the <coughs> continued weather like this, we will have some point one available. No, yes, overtime. So we would have some personnel potentially to be able to move some budget line now. Oh, that keep breaking the water means like we did the other night. Or I hope we should have some money for it. I'm just looking for no. Okay. If we get no more big storms, we potentially yeah. could but save you know, money like, on you know, overtime. The changing sewer pipes look bad. Right. 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 They replace all that. It's right where it says we've already pulled off. We have to fix that. We had to address, and those weren't expenses that typically I budgeted for. So, Chris, I mean, I, I made my thoughts known on this. Do you think it is appropriate to leave it as is, or do you think that we should uh, establish a line for it? I don't mean to put you on the spot. I hate to put Chris on the spot, I and mean, just for accounting areas, it's either easier for us to know than to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's easy. We create a line and we take the line away. You know, yeah, we, yeah. We can decide how much I mean, money we want to put in that. I mean, I'm willing to try and sweep it through. I we mean, have the know. line. If we ever need to fund it, we can do it too. We can do a from and a two. Well, I think I just heard Jane say if we create a line, we have to fund it. Right. So we, we've had one in the past. So we have it. It's sitting empty in our. Well, I didn't, I didn't yeah. remove it. It's oh, sitting. The line is still there. But it's still there. It just got zero dollars yeah. in. So there should be two thousand dollars for the budget. I wasn't allowed. Spend that money for the bill. Yeah. Okay. Unless uh, I didn't know there was a line in the budget already. I thought we were reinstating it so we we needed to, we, to do it. So we don't need to do any of this. So. Well, I'm happy that we had a conversation where we talked about our dedication to the <coughs> Child Care Center. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. So, uh, the, so there's uh, some uh, discussion of the new Paul's public. Yeah, so I attended the village board meeting last night, and uh, this was also a discussion there. Um, I actually asked the village board to have the discussion. They complied with that, and I participated as well. What I told the village board that I would like to do, and what they did at their meeting as well, is to um, just publicly state, and then also put it in the newspaper and on our website, that we will seek to uh, seek applicants for the New Paltz Public Access Committee. This was a committee that we had that was disbanded at one point in time, and um, there's a real importance in my view, as well as the Village Board's view, and as well as um, Bob Hagen's view as well, for us to bring this back. So um, I, I would just like to request to the board that we do advertise for those positions. I don't know if there's any other questions, comments, or concerns, or if a motion is required to do that. But um, I make a motion that we advertise for those positions. Second. All those in favor? All, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. That was okay, that was so we have a discussion of fireworks. I brought it up earlier at another meeting um, that the, uh, the dates seem to matter. Uh, I've done some work, called around a few places, talked to the, the vendor that we've used in the past, and uh, I was told that the date doesn't matter. It costs us the same amount of money for the fireworks no matter which day we, we do it on. Um, and, but he said the 4th, um, it fills up quick. We might not want to do it on the 4th. I've talked to Chris. I've talked to uh, Dave Weeks. Um, and it seems like the Friday the 1st is, but we could do it on Friday the 1st or Saturday the 2nd. I wanted to talk to the board about it. 
Uh, Friday the 1st is nice. Uh, if we do it on uh, Saturday the 2nd, we have to pay overtime on the day of and the day after. But if we do it on the 1st, we pay overtime on the day after, not the day uh, for setup. So I think it'll be cheaper for us if we do it on the, Friday the 1st. Also, it kind of kicks off the weekend, and we're one of the early shows. I think it'll be fun. But I want to have a discussion. I always love that in New Paltz. We never hold the 4th of July celebration on the 4th of July. Um, so I, I, I get that idea. My only question would be in doing it on the 1st, is there another municipality in Ulster County that presently does that? Because I wouldn't want to compete with that municipality. That would be my only concern in any date that we choose. How do you find that out? We would have to look at a municipality. I know that the city of Kingston does one, Saugerties does one as well, and I wouldn't want to conflict with either of those, and there may be another that I'm not thinking of right now. Gardner does them also. Gardner so. does do them. And actually, maybe, uh, I think, you know, one good thing, and I tried to do it with the past supervisor, but he wasn't as interested, but uh, there's a new supervisor in Gardner, Ms. Majestic. Mm -hmm. Maybe calling her, because uh, the actual border of Gardner is closer to the county mm -hmm. fairground site and majority of the population in New Falls. And they do phone there as also out of their public cost. And maybe they would be interested, since it's your new supervisor, if he's a new supervisor, maybe we could get that interest and we could combine with that. Shared um, services. I like it. And the reason being is it's getting harder and harder for us to get the contributions. I mean, uh, I just want to really want to say that the shop right has always been above and beyond. Uh, they give us a very large check. Uh, Kempner Brothers have always been on above and beyond and given us a very large check. Uh, I apologize, but uh, I know Nippin Building gave a pretty large check. And I apologize if I'm leaving anyone out. Those are the three top ones that come to mind. I apologize if I left anyone out. But I, I know Gardner like, also. I think it's a great idea. So I wonder if Ms. Majestic would be, I, I think, you know, she's, she may be very interested in combining them. And because the, the cost of the fairgrounds is not high at all. We just need to reserve that probably in the next 60 days, probably 30 days. That's that's one of the big ones is is the county fairgrounds. Believe it or not, that and the fireworks, and then hopefully we can get some volunteers back again to do entertainment. Well, but I know the county uh, getting the fairgrounds and they asked for a deposit, which was a big deal, and then the deposit to the uh, fireworks company. I will check on the fairgrounds, talk to the supervisor. And we'll find out about other municipalities and we'll discuss this. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Maybe an uh, email so we can get sorry, this. Yeah, done. I started to cut more on there. But could I could think we? <laughs> Mary Beth just keeps a full, keeps saying if your shoe works during the day at the town hall, so I think you can get hold of Mary Beth pretty easy. And that's easy enough. Yeah, 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 that's good. She might, good. And she might even already have some people willing to help you with it. That's yeah. great. Could we authorize <coughs> the supervisor to select the date as he finds best? So as not to hold it up four weeks until our next meeting. Is that a motion? Well, it's a question if that's an appropriate item. Three weeks, right? It's appropriate. Well, three and a half. Yes. It's not. Uh, that's a motion. I, I like to make that as a motion that we authorize the supervisor to talk to other supervisors in the area uh, and to I'll, explore I'll grants and to select the date that best fits. Great. I think Dan said, maybe. Yeah. Maybe if that's. That makes sense if it's uh, an issue, you know, because yeah, we want to secure the, uh, <coughs> you know, secure the company, right? In a timely fashion. So, right. all right, that's I, fine. That sounds so the first or the right. second seems fine for all of us, so it doesn't really matter. In this way, if he finds that suddenly a date is no longer available right. for the company, he's not hamstrung until yeah. there's fewer dates at three weeks from now. Great. So, Jeff, what were you, you said entertainment? What might be the options for entertainment? Uh, entertainment, we've always booked bands. Those you can kind of put off a little bit more. I, I forget the names. They've got some pretty, I don't remember the names of the band. Uh, My sister played one year. They, 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 I, they've always been very good bands. We usually get someone local. Uh, I, and, and someone's here, I don't know about Sometimes I'm away, sometimes they're here. If someone also wants to volunteer to MC. I've done it a few times. Uh, but we get some decent bands. Yeah because it, it starts prior to sunset, so we have, uh, usually there's a 1,500 or so people will come out and picnic. Mm -hmm. uh, we had about nine different vendors. What kind of rock band it is? It's, it's always a wide variety. Family rock. 
Okay. Family, 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 Great. So, so the band usually, uh, and then other entertainment, there was uh, bouncy houses that we paid for. And Joanna Teeters, do last year, who's very talented. Sure. Yeah, the sure that's very quick, though. That's just one call to Bob Stubbs, and I can offer that. But I think maybe if we combine the funds with another town, we could also save a little, because we did, gee, yeah. top of my head, five thousand, six thousand dollars we spent last yeah. year? Top of my head? Yeah, that's what we yeah. Six thousand dollars, and that was for the band and for uh, the bouncy house. People were very good. Uh, they donated part of the services and we pay for part of the services. So it, it's turning into a very nice big family day. Uh, or evening right. and uh, so, um, so all, all those in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Thank so, you. I love that collaboration. That's great. <coughs> well, we're not going out of the park yet. So we, we do have uh, some stuff for executive session. Do we want to finish the agenda first? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Right. Uh, let's go through the uh, update uh, Melbourne Preserve. Uh, the, uh, the easement and, and uh, you you, in sales tax. Okay, I'm working on child porn for child care center for Sorry, I should something should go on. Go for it. <laughs> 2015, um, we were looking into having winter social, so the same people look at our money, look at that building. Um, toward the end of the year, I handed the supervisor and asked him what Doug would do to take a better look at the building than we've done. Mm -hmm. um, didn't come to light. I've asked them to resubmit a new one. Before. It's probably going to be, I think, less than $900, 960 um, the, the determination that we made sometime in 2017, I think that's important to have done. Um, if no one has an issue with me going forward with that, with the you know, to set that up, or, or at least to get us another estimate and submit it to the board and say yes or no, that's okay to do it. And all this information to get get an estimate so they can take a look at the building better than we've done before. And they're specifically looking for mold, perhaps? Mold, just the degradation just side. Just a general just overlook of the yeah, building. So we had an engineer look at it. It was a, it was a free. Right, um, and we pull it around and look. But really, so we take a few more samples and take a little better of a look at it. Because the last time it was done, maybe long enough ago? Well, it was, it was done last year. Uh -huh. A lot of questions raised. Okay. It, it, it raised some structural issues. I think they had the, you know, a couple of deficiencies, but there's other things we didn't look at that doesn't do. It certainly wanted to be safe for the children. I'm, I'm sure it's safe. If it wasn't, I would have requested it be right. closed <laughs> down a while ago. If the report's going to be out there, I just would like to get it, get it done, and just, this way you all have the information of the decision when it's time to and I'll hit yes before I say yes or no. So, yeah, so, so, so I make a motion sure. to have Chris get uh, an estimate. Second. Uh, the discussion? All, move, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So move. Okay. All right. Milbert Preserve. In 2015, when the town and the village were negotiating and understanding called it, intermunicipal agreement, we use the acronym IMA, uh, we each agreed that should we not be successful in garnering a grant through our application through the consolidated funding program, that by June 30th of 2016, there would be excuse me, <coughs> conservation easements placed on the two parcels, one by the village and one by the town. Um, in order to move that effort forward, Julie Lillis and I met with Christy DeBoer from the Walker Valley Land Trust to discuss the possible interest and willingness of the trust to hold the conservation easement for the town. Um, we would expect there would probably be a parallel conversation by the village, but we spoke specifically about the town. And, and she is willing to take that to her board. There's a reasonable expectation that uh, their board will be amenable to holding the conservation easements. What this does is it protects the land in perpetuity. That's forever. And that is um, a desirable goal to see that uh, there is no further development on the parcels in the Millbrook Preserve. In fact, our goal is to expand it and whenever we can to, to add a contiguous parcels to it. Uh, there's a cost associated with it. It's approximately $10,500 to $11,000. Uh, 
and I will read from Christie the long-term management and enforcement associated for each new easement is funded by a contribution by the landowner, in this case the town or the village, to our stewardship and conservation defense fund of $7,000, $3,500 for stewardship, $3,500 for defense. Also, the development of the conservation easement document itself, $1,000, the baseline documentation report, $1,000 to $1,500, and other items to file and record the easement upon closing, another $1,000. Uh, we have already engaged the trust to begin the process of preparing the baseline documentation, uh, and they have, therefore, uh, we've already expended some of the necessary funds. I don't know how much of the $1,000 to 1500 for the baseline documentation we've already been able to, uh, to, to get done. Uh, so, my motion tonight is that we move forward with discussions with the Walker Valley Land Trust for them to hold the conservation easement on our property within the Millbrook Preserve and that tonight we approve $1,000, the first $1,000, so that the process of writing the conservation easement can be begun. And I would propose that at least temporarily we take those $1,000 from our contingency fund. So none of this was budgeted in last year's budget? That's correct. Um, and also, you know, Marty, I wish you would give me some of that information because I don't myself as you were the ones that were questioning it. Uh, I will start out by saying I have nothing against the Walker Valley Land Trust. I support them holding many of the easements in our community for which many of them uh, do not have public access. They are uh, doing easements for which uh, the landowner has given us an easement uh, to protect it as either wetlands or as a buffer to other nearby lands. Uh, it, it's not even against them. There is no pressure to develop this, pro this, this property. There's no pressure on any of the sides to do it. Uh, the village has not completed, I believe, the acquisition of their 62 acres that I'm aware of. Uh, and in New York State also, uh, we can designate that as parkland. Uh, and once we designate it as parkland, uh, to do anything to it would be what they refer to as uh, parkland alienation. And the only way you can alienate the parkland is with an act of the New York State legislators. So if we designate it as a parkland via resolution and make it a parkland, it would be fully protected. Uh, the $10,000, $1,000, I think we could find a lot of uses for that fund in helping to develop that park. So it's not that I'm in, not in support of Walker Valley Land Trust. As you know, I'm in full support of them. Uh, I'm in full support of the land. I was on the board to help purchase the land back when it was still being proposed to be a to be developed. Uh, Stony Woods was actually the portion that the town purchased was the one that was being you know, proposed to be developed. Is Stony Woods? We purchased the 62 acres. I was in full support to help work on that, and I want to continue to see this open space and parkland. But I, I don't know if all the bandages of the Walker Valley Land Trust. Uh, you did mention that also the Walker Valley Land Trust is working on, and they hope to be a certified uh, uh, holder of easements. Uh, right now, they are not. They very well could be. It may happen this year, it may not. Uh, one of the tremendous advantages of using someone to certify, and I'll just use the example of the local one. Uh, seeing it cuts in is they also then guarantee the ability to both protect and litigate and enforce any encroachments upon it. Uh, Walker Valley Land Trust does not have all those abilities at its disposal right now. So I don't believe we quite have a hurry on it or pressure on it from the town or the village or any developers coming in on it. Correct, incorrect, or well, I, I tried to take some notes, Jeff, and in, when you sent around an email, I did reply to it and address some of these in that email. I don't have that email with me now that I'm having trouble with my town account, so you may not have even received that. Um, first of all, there is an IMA, which is a board passed document, and it stipulates that if we don't get the CFA grant, that by not later than June 30th, we will put a conservation easement on it. So to not do that would require us to revise the IMA 
and that would also require the village to participate because we have identical IMAs. Yeah, but before you leave that one, and I'm sorry, the village does is currently in control of that land. No, we control so one parcel and they control the other. They parcel. have completed sales. So, yes, and I, 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 that is correct. About a month and a half ago, they closed on the property. Okay. The village now owns it. Uh, you talked about there's no pressure on the town because the town owns it. The goal is to protect it in perpetuity, as stipulated by the previous board and is reflected in the IMA. And for the town to own it does not protect it in perpetuity because any future town board could decide, absent protection, as parkland or as a conservation easement, that they could do whatever they wanted with it, subdivide it, develop it, sell it. Well, actually, no, just saying, uh, under general municipal law, that's actually not fully correct. It takes an act of the New York State legislators for parkland to be what they call alienated. What I said was absent, I'll repeat it, absent designation as parkland or conservation easement. A future town board could elect on its own to sell it, subdivide it, or use it for any purpose it wished. That would not be protecting it in perpetuity as open space. Well, as parkland, it would, and I'll use the example. Again, I said either A or B would protect it, but absent one of those, it is not protected. So we could use the parkland. Uh, we could. Very similar as we've done with Moore Yellow Park. So Moore Yellow Park, for example, is the, the designated parkland and cannot be touched. Either. Julie and I had an opportunity to chat with Bob Anderberg from Open Space Institute, and that conversation was so that we could um, learn more about the differences between conservation <laughs> easements and parkland designations. Uh, we, we could, as a town, pass a resolution to designate it as parkland. Uh, my understanding is that, I've also discussed it with Kara Lee, uh, but not as in depth. And were we to designate it as parkland and the New York State Department of Parks take it over, they would require, I'm told, a very large endowment. I cannot quantify what a large endowment is. Uh, so designating it as parkland is one way to do it. The, um, another conversation that we had with Bob Vandenberg suggested that not all parkland designations are in perpetuity. That some of them have a finite lifespan of between 27 and 40 years. Was, was that the range he gave us? I'd have to go back to my notes. Sure. And I don't know the details, and I don't know that he did, but either way, we didn't get into the details about about that. So I think that we don't have enough information on. Um, in terms of, you had suggested yeah. other organizations such as Scenic Hudson, uh, they are not interested in holding the easement. Uh, the OSI, by the way, is also not interested in holding the easement. In fact, they recommended that we reach out to Walker Valley Land Trust. You asked about the. Who did you speak to at the Cine Hudson? Um, we talked to <laughs> Seth McKee. Okay. Or I did. Um, and he, of course, is not the ultimate decider. Um, he's, he's part of their team, and he can't speak for the organization, but he indicated that that's not the kind of uh, business that they're looking, a uh, property that they're looking to hold easements on. I think we'd also have to look into the budget if we have money and the contingency funds for this whole you know ten thousand dollars anyway i mean that's a, that's a big chunk of change that wasn't budgeted for by the previous board uh, i'm i'm reluctant to agree to anything moving forward without looking at the numbers first and i think i'd also like to look at numbers and one is also speak to and again i've known seth for a long time i believe the woman's name is christy and I, uh, i'm going blank on her last name at Cena cuts in and she is the acquisition and she's the one who presents to the board. So I think it would be worth reaching out to the acquisition division of Cena cuts in uh, to see if actually this is something they could be interested in. Also, I'm not aware, and I look through, it's all under general municipal law, parks, recreation, historic law. I didn't see anything in there about any type of endowment or fund being required for designated parkland. Now I'm using, you know, I know it's going back now to the 50s. Moriello Park has never had any funds set up on it, uh, but they may have changed the law since there were a lot of changes in the 60s. Uh, but I didn't see anywhere where it was required that parkland have a fund put on it, but that could have changed. And Marty, um, Bob, Bob, Bob would know probably. Bob Anderberg didn't say that because I was in on that conversation. He didn't say anything about an endowment. Where did you get that information from? 
Carl Lee. Okay. Yeah, I, I would have to look into that because under alienation and there's a whole alienation handbook on New York State Parks. It doesn't. I never saw anything there that spoke to having to set up a fund. Uh, but it is very difficult to go in and do anything on anything that's been designated as a as a park in New York State and when it's done by well, a town board. The good, it, yeah. the good news is we don't have to decide anything. Well, we we have until uh, what did you say, Marty? June thirty. Right. So we have until June thirtieth, and in my so conversation with Christy, I asked her um, what would be the latest date that okay. she felt. Julie asked me to follow up on that, and Julie's been at a conference, so she wasn't able to do that. Uh, and and Christy said she would like to be able to begin now, but she could felt like she could here as late as the end of February and still be able to be completed by June 30th. But she said she didn't know that she necessarily could if she didn't hear it by the end of February. We have two more meetings in February, and we'll look into the money and the other rules, and I'm glad you brought it One more thing I'll just mention that Marty and I have discussed is that um, I, I certainly am in favor of, of uh, holding up to gather more information, but the thing that uh, Marty has pointed out is that the other conservation easements that surround this property you know, are held by Walker Valley Land Trust. That includes Woodland Pond and also Poets Walk. You know about Poets Walk? I mean, so that's something they possibly can you know, work into the mix. And, and also just to find out a little bit more about their status in terms of their uh, Walker Valley Land Trust uh, accreditation. Accreditation, yeah. yes. And, and I also and did ask Christy about that. She, she said they don't know a date, but she would anticipate it being granted within approximately the next month. Oh, oh, oh. Might even so, well, so it's pretty, okay. it appears as though it's fairly imminent. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds like we'll need to bring this up again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's a motion on the table. Do we have to, what do we do when there's a motion on the table? Do, do we take, do we uh, take a motion to table. Table. table it? No one second. No one second. No one second. No one second. So, so motion fails for lack of second. second. We had a discussion. That was it. Uh, what? I never seconded it, so. Um, can't so believe it. Oh, boy. Do you want sales tax? Do we have to go into the executive session? Why don't we just finish the agenda? Did you want to do anything? Uh, Jeff, did you want to say anything about the sales tax? Yeah, I just wanted an update on it because I was concerned about the emails you were sent out about the county sales tax. Mm -hmm. So I called up and spoke to people in the county, and it seems that what you sent out to us was different than what the county is relaying. Yeah, I yeah. talked to Mike Hyde today. Yeah, and Mike had called had, your office. Yeah, we had a nice mm -hmm. conversation. Um, you know, I, I think nothing's been decided yet, and everything's, you know, like most things, it's up in the air, so I don't think there's, there's not a lot to discuss yet, especially when we don't know what the, what the final things are. Right? But, I, but I would like to address that. I was actually very disappointed that an email that specifically said that there were negotiations going on somehow made it to the county executive because it has a, an impact not just for our town but for the 20 other towns who are involved in this process? Well, it wasn't a somehow, it was me, and I sent it up because you made direct reference saying that the county executive was concerned about an expenditure in the community, and I spoke to the executive's office twice today, mm -hmm. and uh, that was never a concern from him. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you, I even spoke to the county executive that made the reference to, actually I made a note of it down, he made the question, he questioned the town of Rochester about mm -hmm. an expense for which they're continuing to budget for. Mm -hmm. And Mike Hine never speaks poorly of New Paltz. In fact, Mike Hine uses New Paltz as a direct example. I don't think I say Mike Hine speaks poorly of New Paltz. I'm, I'm, I'm just simply saying that, that what it is is you sent it out. I'm sitting here yeah. reading it, and I will fully say, yes, I sent it up. I was very concerned. Yeah, that's totally inappropriate. Be, not inappropriate. One hundred percent. It involves co negotiations for something that drastically impacts every town in Ulster County, and you gave away information on ongoing negotiations that has impacts for tens of thousands of dollars. Which is why, in that email, I specifically state that it's ongoing negotiations and do not send it. And you took it upon yourself to do that anyway. And you gave away information on what the towns want to do in negotiating that. 
and because you gave the upper hand, should those towns lose money, I'm now going to really wonder who they're going to think gave away the upper hand. Because you've now admitted on camera that you did that. And I had to call other town supervisors today and let them know that that information was given to the county executive and how disappointed they were that that happened. Okay. So as the secretary to the comptroller, you feel it's your duty to deal in what is nothing more than speculation and rumor. You that, are not in any of these. So please, Dan, do not talk down to me. I'm not talking down to you. have some special knowledge. I spoke to the executive's office multiple times. They asked me to send this up. I please tell me what claim in the email I sent that you think to be inaccurate. Because I've spent a great deal of time learning about this issue, and I'm more than prepared to discuss that with you. And I don't think that you have nearly as much knowledge on the on this conversation that I have. So you did not attend any meetings relative to this conversation. You have not spoken to any supervisor relative to this conversation. You, you've spoken to the county executive and so have I. You have referenced my job, which is not relevant to this conversation, and I think it's actually inappropriate that you would do that as well. And you've now admitted that you gave away information that was supposed to stay with us to them, which now makes the second meeting where you have violated such information. Have no violation here whatsoever. Yes, it's contract negotiations. It's negotiations, and you gave it away. Okay. So I, one thing is is that you stated that the county executive, that the problem was with the county executive. He had a problem with six thousand dollars being uh, spent off for the county supervisor, for the town supervisor. Uh, for being the coordinator for the funds for welfare officer. The county executive never said that, and the county executive was not even aware of that. And you stated that the county executive and I spoke informally about potential change in sales taxes, and I outlined the issues that I shared with you yesterday. Mike Hine defended the legislator's take on the towns not being good stewards of their funds by citing the town of New Paltz paid $6,000 for a welfare officer in 2015. Mike Kine's office never stated that. Mike Kine said he never stated that, along with another county executive said he never stated that. These are negotiations being done by an executive committee mm -hmm. for which we are fully being represented mm -hmm. by the very few Democrats that are there. So mm -hmm. I'm actually embarrassed that you are seem to be accusing and not trusting the very Democrats that are representing us. The majority I of the elected so officials are Democrats, but the Republicans, the Republicans are, I'm not really done here, though. no, I'm not being done here, Neil, because I'm now being accused of being unethical, and I feel that the secretary to the comptroller is putting out information that's absolutely false, that's and nothing everything that he discussed, and including discussion he had with you, Neil, is that he does nothing but support and false the very community that he is from. This is the very good, and and he says he has a, he says he has a great relationship with you, and yet now we have someone telling us that there's this great. I mean, Dan, how much is the total sales tax? What is total sales tax going up from the county? Okay, you know, Jeff, you are not familiar with this conversation. I actually am. So. You're well, not. To the question, did you attend the county's presentation on this? How much is the total sales tax, Dan? The total sales tax revenue that New Paltz generates is no, roughly two hundred sales tax thousand dollars. I don't know the, uh, okay, I do know it's $107 million. It's projected for next year to be $109 million. It's been an increase of 4.1% from 2014 to 2015, which makes us the third highest county in New York State to have an increase when the majority of the counties in New York State have a decrease. But, and then how much of that goes out to the 20 towns? 3%. 3%. So the county executive's office even said, we have no interest in harming that three percent. How much is going out of that to the city of Kingston? I believe it's eleven and a half percent. Twelve percent goes out to them. That's where the negotiation. Every five years, these negotiations come out. Mm -hmm. So at no time have they been spoken. In fact, everyone in the negotiations is not speaking. The what chairman of the Ways and Means Committee made a presentation on Tuesday where he stated he would like to see one percent of the three percent reduced from the towns. It's a matter of public record. It's been filmed. It's on the internet. You did not attend the meeting. You're making statements that are inaccurate. And you're making statements. You're sending emails out. I 100% stand by the statements that I made in that email. Okay. Well, they are from the discussions I had with county executives. They are completely inappropriate, and I don't. The county executive did not make that statement at a public forum. He made the statement to me about welfare officers continuing to be in towns. 
He did not only cite our town, he cited other towns. I agree with him that it was an inappropriate expenditure, as I've said at this meeting. Even if that part of the conversation, it doesn't matter because we still have the issue with the potential of sales tax being reduced. Right. And that has dire impacts on the town of New Paltz. And it is my hope that the county executive, like I said in that email, will come to a solution that will help everyone, which is what he told me he would do. And I believe that he will do that. Yeah. Your statements about the makeup of the legislator are also inaccurate, which further makes me question if you really do understand the topic at hand. Please teach me about. the makeup of it, because the reason it has a Republican majority is we have Democrats that have changed over and become Republicans, and it's forced it over. So hence why a Democrat who represents the village in Newports is the minority leader. So I believe it's a concern. Cool it's a concern it. by the town supervisors in Ulster County that the towns will lose a share of the revenue. Okay. The yeah. share I was a no, I, I'm not done that because I was assured directly from I was yeah of course you can work. I was assured directly from the county executive office that the towns are not a consideration. I mean, I, you would think you would be. I'm happy the county office. executive said that, and thank you for breaking that news to everyone today. But that is not the presentation that was made by the Ulster County Legislator on Tuesday, which is a matter of public record, which has been reported in even Ulster Publishing, and we have a representative sitting in front of us as well. Your, the email that I gave to you is based on those presentations. So if something has changed, then Jeff, I thank you so much for updating us all Dan, and telling us don't be kind of sending it. I'm you not. Know, I'm thanking you for doing that because that's not public information speak, yet, and you've now made that public. Like you've made a number of things. And when you today. speak, thank you very much. And Marty, it shows Marty, that you have a lack of knowledge of yourself. I am very well informed I on the topic, think, Jeff, and you've made it very apparent tonight that you are absolutely I was, not. I think what's more concerning, and if we were going to go to our county and. What I was told is that it would be much better that if Neil, or is any questions from this board, if Neil would directly speak to the county, the county executive, executive asked to speak so with me, and I'm more than happy to speak to Neil at any time. I am actually more concerned that the town of Olive receives two hundred and forty thousand dollars in tax revenue, and yet we only receive two hundred twenty-nine. Well, that shows so that you really also don't understand that's made by an equalization rate. But you know a lot about the topic, Jeff. So, so thanks for sharing. So Dan, again, your condescending tone of voice and the way that you describe that just surely shows that you do not have a knowledge and you haven't spoken to me. I can tell you exactly how much the assessed value is of our community and what is the, it has to do with what is the wholly assessed value and that we have a much larger portion of our tax rolls off, of which Kevin and I went up to the county mm -hmm. two years ago and spoke to the county about that it is not fair that the town of New Paltz loses such a huge share of its tax dollars because we have such a huge portion of our dollars off of the tax rolls. So it's something you share my concern as well of the town losing sales tax revenue. I appreciate uh, we that. Lo you know, Dan, again, your condescending tone right. and your immature I gotta, way I gotta, we gotta stop this. I can't take it anymore. Yeah, because the, the immature right. tone, you know, I'm glad we have adults representing okay. us in Thank you for your ageist comment let's, once let's, again, let's, Joe. Uh, let's, uh, we'll continue this discussion, I'm sure. Um, okay. But Marty would like to comment. What I, what I would like to say is that the email that Dan sent in the first sentence said, this is presently being negotiated, thus the contents of this email should stay with those on the email. I have also circulated what I perceived to be inappropriate material that I marked confidential regarding very, very preliminary budget numbers. Both of those bits of information have now been made public by the same source. I think anybody reading being negotiated should stay in this email before taking the initiative to reach out beyond the circulation of this email should have, at the minimum have been respectful enough to have contacted the author of it. So now you're supporting that we are running a, a secret shadow government. No, here. absolutely. It's 100% right. right. compliance with full so Thank you, Dan. We appreciate that. So, yes, yeah, so I will continue. And then anything that's shared beyond you know, one person is public information. You are now. Not when it deals with contract negotiation, public Jeff. In public information. And that would be public information. So it's we not also okay. want to support that it is a that stop breaking open be. meetings laws. That's all I'm asking you. You've done it twice this so month. Dan, again, you please show stop. You show your majority. I, I, I was hoping that you, you show your majority once That's, again by please make more not being jokes. Uh, We live in a young community, I, and you can persistently do it. I, I make a motion that we move on to what is hopefully will be a fun and uh, pleasant executive session. <laughs> So moved. Uh, seconded, rather. I'm sorry. Uh, for, you need to state for the purpose of. For the pur purpose of a fun and exciting executive session. Personnel. Personnel.
personnel. For, for, no, this, is for, so, this is for personnel matters. Which specific employees. Specific employees. Uh, it's in your board packet. Uh, and I would ask that Gene join us in executive session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Session. Seconded. In favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so um, I would like, uh, I make a motion that the board uh, authorize me to send a letter to the former assessor, Lori King, responding to her letter. So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Uh, I would like to I'd like to make a resolution authorizing uh, me, the supervisor, to engage the labor attorney and the buildings and grounds uh, in regards to a payroll discrepancy. Second. All discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. I would like to make a resolution uh, uh, authorizing uh, Gene to hold G, G, our comptroller to hold back on the boot allowance checks until we are finished renegotiating with the union. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. I make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. <laughs>